Hi, I'm Gary Kopp. I'm here with Pete Lucido, and this is the 16th show, Pete. Wow. Number 16. Sweet 16. Sweet 16. Uh, 16 of them. 16 half-hour shows. That's good. Imagine we can find that much to talk about for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, we've got several things that we want to talk about today. Um, first of all, certainly the, uh, the Flint water thing. Um, we've got a bunch of information that's flying around. Uh, you invited me up to the state to uh, watch the state of the state, and I have to admit that was a, uh, an interesting, interesting effort. Uh, if you got, you know, you were on the floor, I was up in the balcony. I was looking right down at uh, Governor Snyder's uh, right shoulder looking at him, and I, I found it interesting that uh, he was very nervous. He was kind of mixing some words and things, although he was reading from a script. I found it interesting. I think this foot and water crisis thing is really playing on him. Yeah. I hope it's not something political or whatever, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, what's your spin on this? Well, there's no spin. I think it was direct. I think it came from the heart, and I'll tell you why. Um, you don't normally give a state of the state like he did. Mm -hmm. This state of the state was a very somber state of the state. It wasn't there a high was. energy. It wasn't about all the good things that were yeah. done. It was about a crisis. It was a crisis that actually I don't think any other state has seen. Yeah. We have a huge dilemma in Flint, and finger pointing has been started and everything. And what I think Schneider wanted to do, the governor wanted to make sure that number one, that the individuals that he believed at first blush were responsible are out of yeah. his, out of his control and executive branch. Mm -hmm. Number two, he said. I'm sorry, and I'll fix it. Yeah. He said, the buck stops with me. I am the top guy. Mm -hmm. It is my responsibility and my obligation. That's what he said, yep. Yep. and I'm sorry, and I'll fix it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have to give any more to people, I don't know what else you can give. Yeah. He said, my three objectives are, number one, get the water turned back on, yeah. because people living without water in today's age <laughs> is not yeah. right. Number two, get the medical care and treatment for those that need it. And number three, find a system in the future that is never gonna have these problems throughout our great state. And the last thing is that I think is very critical to tell the viewers is, this is a problem that's probably not gonna just sit in Flint, but it could go to all the other municipalities throughout yeah. the state if you're not engaging and keeping up your infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I wanna share with the viewers out there, Time Magazine, Time Magazine just has, on the front cover for the February edition, it says, the poisoning of an American city, toxic water, sick kids, and incompetent leaders who betrayed Flint. Unbelievable. This is us, guys, this is Michigan. It's sad, but it's true. Yeah. We have a problem, and we're trying to go ahead and get it resolved. Yeah. Uh, Governor Snyder was on Fox and Friends this morning, it must have been about I don't know, 7.30 or something like that, and they were grilling them. And basically, you know, how could the system let these folks down? And, uh, you know, he's bobbing and weaving, doing whatever he's got to do, but I, I think he was honest and says the buck stops with me. He's right. going to take responsibility for it. But, I mean, over the weekend you start hearing about heads in the, uh, uh, the DEQ that are people that are exiting the show. We had our own dilemmas with the DEQ. Dan White, who was the director at the time when mm -hmm. oil drilling was going on in Shelby, we've had meetings with him, not only myself, but also other leaders, and asked him, why is it that you have to come around these houses? And it was up to Dan Wyatt, who was the director of the MDEQ, mm -hmm. who resigned because of this water crisis. Right, right. The MDEQ is responsible for getting their orders from the EPA. Right. And the EPA dictates how water should have parts per, parts per billion, billion yeah. to go ahead and have levels of acceptability or mm -hmm. rejectability. Mm -hmm. You can sit there and play with those levels all day long, but the reality is, if they're not the right levels, shut the tap yeah. off and not yeah. have anybody have water yeah. because their health and safety comes first yeah. before delivering an inferior product right. that's gonna right. cause issues. Yeah. So Dan Wyatt, who's the director of the MDEQ, or was, now he's resigned, yeah. took his orders from the EPA as it relates to these are what it is. Mm -hmm. The problem is, if he doesn't get direction the right way, or doesn't ask questions, you're really not doing the job you should be charged yeah. to doing. You better ask the right questions. Yeah. 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 
Well, it's interesting to me the timeline, when you start looking at the timeline on this whole thing, about how Flint made a decision that they were going to exit Detroit water system. And then in the interim, they're going to be building another water system, which is going to pull water out of Lake Huron, I think, believe it is? Yep. And then, but in the interim, we're just going to pull water out of the Flint River. Well, me being the media guy that I am, you look at the TV and you look at the, the they show shots of the Flint River. This thing looks terrible. And I mean, I don't know if the media is doing that on purpose to try to get you all upset, but you look at this picture of the Flint River and you got, why would anybody want to pull water out of this thing? It's brown and dingy and oh my God, what are you doing? It's called about saving money. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. There was a conscious decision made. There was a city council from Flint that were in place with the emergency manager. So this timeline that's being investigated by the Department of Justice, yeah. this literally will give us some insight as to who, what, when, where, and how. Mm -hmm. When you answer those questions, I think you got all the facts before you. Mm -hmm. I know as a, as, as a very uh, in-depth discussion, we could talk about my back, my past, which was being a lawyer, I looked at all the facts first before and listened to all the arguments before making a decision. Mm -hmm. Whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, all the facts need to be told to right. you and all the arguments need to be made. Mm -hmm. Then you can adjust your decision based on those. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. we're talking in a vacuum. The Department of Justice is going to come out with its report, I hope soon. In the meantime, the first, the first and foremost is get the water on. Yeah. Let's get the water on. That means safety. Yeah. Two, yeah. let's get the medical conditions under control. And three, let's go ahead and not have this ever, yeah. ever happen ever again. again. Yeah. The, uh, you know, you look at the timeline and you look at this thing. It actually started in 2013 in April, apparently. That's when they decided they were going to make all these switchovers. But um, some of the things that I found in January, they identified this thing called tri trihalomethanes, which is uh, the, the chemical things that happen when you start treating water with chlorine and you get bioproducts and things like that. I mean, it's nasty stuff. You start looking this stuff up, and this, I know in my business, we used to use trichloromethanes for degreasing car parts and things like that when they would come back into the, into the, uh, the engineering office after they were on test. This is some nasty, nasty stuff. You've got to have downdraft machines so it forces the air down so it's not something that you breathe. They say this stuff you can, in the shower, you can actually get it in through your skin. You can breathe it in through your nose. Going, holy cow, we're killing everybody yeah, out there. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be in the mode to be drinking that. But Oh, my God. We can talk about exactly uh, how Dr. Hannah Atisha, mm -hmm. in fact, she sat next to me, virtually next to me at the State of the State. She's the one that discovered yeah. and told yeah. The departments, hey, look, your levels of acceptability yeah. is out of control here. And they said, no, it's not. And he, she said, I want to show you my study. Yeah. And the governor did do a shout out for her to say, mm -hmm. thank you for taking the courage and the initiative to bring that yeah, forward. Because, yeah. you know, you're going against the system here. You're going yeah. against a yeah. lot of people. But yeah. you're saying, I think my analysis is correct. Yeah. So in, in looking back in the rear view on this, I think we're going to learn a lot of things that are happening with our own um, our own systems mm -hmm. for water and sewer that we need to address and yeah. we can't wait. Flint mm -hmm. has never addressed their pipe in the ground problem. Yeah. They even have wooden yeah. pipes that are down there still. What's bothering me is we have cities, townships, and villages that are servicing taxpayers, but how are they servicing yeah. them? Yeah. One must wonder after what we see here in Flint yeah. and being on the front cover of Time Magazine is going to cause economic devastation for, sure. for Flint yeah. and the businesses of Flint. Well, I don't think we've heard the end of this yet. We'll carry this on in the next segment. Right now, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. I'm Gary Kopp. I'm here with Pete Lucido, your Lansing legislator. Welcome back. I'm Gary Kopp, here with Pete Lucido, your Lansing legislator. We're going to continue on talking about this water thing. Uh, there's a local initiative, Pete, as I'm sure you're aware, that most all the communities within uh, your district in the 36 are looking at doing some sort of support for the, for the Flint uh, water crisis. 
and we're collecting cases of water and there's going to be an effort to haul them all up to Flint. And I don't think there's really a deadline on this. We just want to keep doing it to help support. So what can you tell us about this? I can tell you this. Shelby Township has its initiative with all of the fire departments and okay. police department. Uh, you can drop cases of water off if you live in that district. Mm -hmm. If you live in Washington, I know it's the two fire departments that are up there. Okay. I know if you live in Bruce, there's a couple fire departments up there. And if you live in Romeo, they want it at the DPW. Okay. You can check with your local offices. I know that once those go into place, either trucks are going to run and bring it up to Flint from the local, which are all volunteers, as well as you can bring it over to Art Van. I know Art Van is doing the oh, same really? thing. Okay. So everybody is bonding together to try to bail out Flint from its problem because if we here in our district had no water, yeah. how would we cook? How would we wash? Yeah. How would we clean? How would we even take care of our own families? It's a great initiative. Yeah. I hope everybody out there does what they need to do. More importantly, let's all work together because pointing the finger is not going to solve the problem. No. No, it's only going to exacerbate a problem. Yeah. I think we need to let the Justice Department sort this one out, but in the meantime, we've got to worry about those folks having f basic necessities like water. You're right. And, and everybody's asked me, Pete, how long is this going to go? No one really knows. You yeah. have to get the water uh, chemistry yeah. right before you return it back on. Yeah. Then the last thing is, how much is this going to cost? This, yeah. this thing has been coming at me like a train, yeah. something that was thrown at us legislators. Mm -hmm. Really, we have no idea what the cost is, but I can only tell the viewers out there that we spent Nine hundred and nine million, nine and a half million. The first week, uh, the second week, we allocated uh, twenty-eight million dollars, and um, I know the federal government has loaned loaned eighty million dollars. Yeah. Because this is not a natural yeah, disaster. Right. So this is uh, this is a man-made disaster. Yeah, you got to yeah. pay it back. Mm -hmm. So it's not a natural disaster. Yeah, it's a yeah. man-made disaster. And what ended up happening was. Uh, President Obama indicated that, you know, we'll give you a loan, but uh, it doesn't fall under the guides of federal disaster in a sense that this was man-made. Real realistically, if the water gets on quicker, then it would just be the medical that we're really going to be concerned with. Mm -hmm. Right now, the governor at the uh, State of the State had indicated unequivocally, number one, the money going out is to take care of the medical first. Mm -hmm. Water needs, filter needs, all of the needs to stabilize the problem. Yeah. To fix the problem, he had makes no admission of liability. Mm -hmm. In addition, in fact, to the contrary, he said, this is not money, nor are we going to give money to fix the pipes. Those pipes have been in the ground for yeah. years yeah. with the lead yeah. base on it. Yeah. Yeah. So that being said, I think that he's being as open and honest saying, we need to get the money out to those that were innocent, but we still need to fix a problem after mm -hmm. this is done with. Mm -hmm. And we have to realize this is just not a concentrated area. This is throughout our state. Well, this has got to be like everywhere. I mean, you know, Flint is an older town. Detroit's an older town. Saginaw, Grand Rapids. You can look at anything. If, if the water chemistry changes, just like it did with the Flint River thing, and all of a sudden now it's starting to leach those little impurities that are out in those pipes, everybody's water system is going to do 100 percent. They tried first to get the smell out, so they adjusted the chemicals. They next try to get the color in mm -hmm. balance. They adjusted the chemicals. When you're adding acid to something to kill something or to, you know, yeah. change the color, yeah. eventually you're going to start eroding the lead on the pipe, exactly. and then that's what got through the system. Yeah, yeah, and that's all the testing and all the things that everybody's doing. Who shot John now? Right? No, we tested that. It was fine. No, it wasn't. Oh, my God. So this is going to go on for a while yet, I'm afraid. The beat goes on, and let's get yeah. those people back up and running because yeah. they didn't cause this. Yeah, yeah. They're just innocent victims of this whole thing. And certainly one of the things our government is supposed to be doing for us is, yeah. you know, let's first line of defense, supplying the kind of thing, the basic needs of the people. If a government can't supply clean water, clean food, and clean air, then what does the government stand for? What are they for? supposed to be doing? Right now we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. I'm Gary Kopp. I'm here with Pete Lucido, your Lansing legislator.
Welcome back. I'm Gary Kopp, here with Pete Lucido, your Lansing legislator. Pete, we talked about this a couple shows ago, but it's starting to get some legs. Yep. Um, May 23rd, we're going to have a salute to Seniors and Veterans Benefit Expo in the district. Correct. Tell us a little bit about what's going on. What have we done so far? That's a Monday. Um, we're soliciting out there now businesses that are uh, geared up towards providing services or their benefits. I've checked with the local county officials, I checked with the state officials, and I've checked with the federal officials as it relates to what services the veterans have, what they're entitled to, what they can ask questions for, anything to do with a veteran benefit or service, mm -hmm. I want to have them from 10 o'clock until noon, the veterans there, okay. and then have a free lunch for all those in the district, and then from one o'clock until three o'clock, we will start our seniors, okay. our senior service, which is independent. Now you could be a veteran and, and a senior, a senior sure. and you go to both of them, sure. but it's to get information, to pick up some trinkets, what I mean by that is some, some giveaways, mm -hmm have a free lunch, and ask the questions that you think yeah. may be able to be beneficial to get the answers you need. Mm -hmm. When you have local, county, state, and then federal officials there, you'll have those departments. You can get the direct line as to those individuals you're asking the questions to. You can get follow-up information from them. Mm -hmm. I don't like the bureaucracy of calling on a telephone and being looped around yeah, and push two yeah. for this and push seven if you want to hear another message and take a survey. I'm not into that. Yeah. What I'm into is give me an answer. That's all I'm asking for. And that's mm -hmm. what government should do yeah. is do a, a service. We're yeah. a service industry. Yeah, right. So I thought this would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Also, I have booklets that will be available before uh, they're, they're going to get printed and distributed in February, and I'll leave them in all the townships. Mm. Generally, at either their city halls or their, their municipal halls, I should yeah, say, yeah. as yeah. well as their senior centers for senior taxes. I want to give them those booklets early on because mm. I know Shelby helps the seniors do their taxes here at the senior center, mm -hmm. and I know Washington has some programs. Mm -hmm. So if I leave those books out for everyone, at least if you don't have time to come and meet, pick up a book. It talks about the new tax law here in yeah. the state. Yeah. Okay. So those will be available in there for free also. Good. But the 23rd of May, mark right. your calendars, the 23rd of right. May, right. we're having that salute and that yeah. expo for services for not only the, se the seniors, but also our veterans. Yeah. Well, the concept really is, is to get the information out, but I think the plan is, is to have individual tables that will have yes. some local businesses and yes. things like that that interest seniors and veterans so they can basically just kind of walk around with your little bag, collect up stuff and ask questions right on the spot and get answers I right there. I see no reason for n somebody not to attend this yeah. if they're healthy and they yeah. want to get something answered. It's going to be right there at right their there disposal. Yeah. So yeah. please, I mean, yeah. I'm going to make it available. Yeah. We're doing the work and then you come on out and have a good time. Yeah, and this is just for right now just 36 district folks right absolutely i mean okay. i want to service and give public service but also provide customer quality service yeah. to those individuals that serve this country as well as those seniors because mm -hmm. they've earned it yeah. Yeah. and they deserve it good i think that'll be fun and you get a free lunch out of the deal how can you be wrong with that right <laughs> I do like to have free lunches. What are we going to call this? Pasta with Pete? No, for stop. No, okay. We stop. don't want to go there anymore. All right. No more no more peas and pastas and yeah. punch skis and stuff. All right. Detroit Public Schools. Yep. Here we go again. You know, you got the Flint water crisis. Now we've got, I think it's the same guy, is it not? It's the same emergency manager that was He's in Flint. He's in Detroit taking care of the Detroit schools. Yeah. Is there a correlation here? I wonder. All right, hold on. Uh, hold on. Everybody should realize, first of all, there is an emergency manager law. Right. Number two, I don't, I don't know if everybody knows, but there was a bill dropped by myself about three to five months ago saying that we expect our, our tradespeople or our contractors that mm -hmm. do work with our own state or our municipalities to be licensed, insured, and bonded. Let me say it again. Mm -hmm. We as citizens expect individuals who are taking jobs and applying for jobs and bidding jobs and getting those RFPs mm -hmm. to be licensed through LARA, insured, and bonded before they start a job. My bill indicates that anyone that does emergency manager work, mm -hmm. the governor has complete autonomy to pick mm -hmm. he or she that serves as an emergency manager in the 
in the in the municipality where it's necessary. Mm -hmm. So we've had them in Benton Harbor, we've had them in Pontiac, and the list goes on. Yeah, sure. We've had these emergency managers who have no tie to the community, so there's no political outcome mm -hmm. as to what jobs need to be cut and eliminated, as to what budgets need to be uh, tuned up and trimmed up, mm -hmm. because they're independent and they work for the governor. Some proponents argue and says, Pete, what you're trying to do now is eliminate individuals that would be qualified to be emergency managers. No, I am not. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to do is that which the public expects yeah. of their own government when we're having people bid on those jobs. Why would we expect less? The governor gets the exclusive right to appoint an emergency manager. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem when they say sovereign immunity, but if it's intentional, reckless, and they don't do the job, yeah. the taxpayer should not mm -hmm. be liable for that which somebody grossly neglected their job. Why? We're not benefited. We didn't have any stake in the decision. Mm -hmm. We're not supervising as taxpayers. Yeah. Only the governor and his appointees yeah. are watching over the emergency yeah. manager. I think it's fair. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, the, the, the governor, he exposes himself a little bit by appointing an emergency manager to come here and do this. But at the end of the day, if the, if Everything collapses the emergency manager, whoever he is, you say, well, I gotta go, I got another job someplace down south and I'm gone and the devastation is left behind. At least with your proposal, there's some kind of accountability that, you know, you're bonded, you're insured, we're making License. sure that we're keeping track of you and uh, if you don't pull their weight and do the right thing, we got some feedback. We've had success with emergency managers in a lot of different cases, including Detroit with uh, Mr. Orr. The reality is, if we have somebody who grossly ne neglects the job, mm -hmm. willfully or wanton uses misjudgment, I think that there should be a bond. I think that there I, should yeah. be insurance so that the yeah. taxpayers don't yeah. foot the bill. Why should we take the fall if somebody's in there screwing Precisely. Yeah, so I'm hoping screwing. that we get some legs, we get a hearing on it, and yeah. in light of what happened in Flint, if <laughs> it comes out that it was intentional, yeah. if it was reckless, I don't think the taxpayer should be on the hook. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully let's be critical about it, but smart about this. Yeah. There is a need for emergency managers to go in and do a job, yeah. but let's have some accountability. Yeah. That's what good government is, is accountable. Yeah. This emergency manager thing, I know we want to talk about the Detroit public school system, but this emergency manager thing, it really is not a political position. It's the guy, person, female, whatever, is put into position basically to get things done, but to eliminate the political landscape, exactly right? Exactly what it is. They don't have any skin in the game. Mm -hmm. They don't have a brother-in-law that works for this department. Yeah. If they got to go in, there's 50. They say, we only need 10. Knocking 40 out saves us this amount of money. Yeah. We don't need this department anymore. Eliminate it. Yeah. Those decisions are to sustain the rockiness of the municipality mm -hmm. to keep it afloat, yeah. not yeah. to have them all yeah. go bankrupt. Yeah. Here's the other thing, Gary. I really truly believe that if you have a government by the people, for the people, then the people should have some say as yeah. to making sure that they have proper coverage and insurance and licensure and bonding mm -hmm. before somebody's appointed to that job. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Let's get back to Detroit this Public Detroit Schools. This Detroit Public School thing then, uh, you're hearing everything on, uh, you know, over the weekend and even prior to that. The teachers are all walking out yep. and they're all saying this is all because of the kids. First of all, I don't believe in strikeouts. I don't. Yeah. I think it's ridiculous because yeah. the students are the ones that suffer. Yeah. What is the teachers accomplishing here? If there's no money by April to put into that system, there is no way they can pay their bills. Right. This is years and years and years of corruption. This is years and years of bad judgment and poor mm -hmm. contracts. Mm -hmm. We have unfunded pension and medical liabilities that happened years ago mm -hmm. that we can't even unfathom. It's like $700 million. Wow. What about the dilapidation of buildings? Yep. People that took money out of the school system where it was supposed to go to fix these buildings, they actually <laughs> went ahead and squandered the money. It was people that were not having proper oversight. Again. Mm -hmm. We go back to what we're talking about. If the money doesn't come by April, and quite frankly, without a blueprint in front of me as to what you plan on doing if you got the money, yeah. and I sure as heck don't know where it's coming from, right. but what you plan on doing if you got the money, yeah. how does it bail you out? I want to know yeah. before a penny, yeah. a penny yeah. gets dispersed. Yeah. Otherwise, I think we need to find alternatives.
Unfortunately, the children, the students, and the teachers of today suffer. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't have been the one. It's from past bad actors right. that yep. have caused this problem. Yep. Yep. The state lottery is something that, remember when the state lottery came in and all that money was going to go into the school system? Is all that money going into the school system? I regrettably say that uh, no, it's not. They, they keep on moving the target, which means we need it here, we need it here. That was the intent. That yeah. was what was displayed to us as citizens. Mm -hmm. This lottery will be the salvation of our mm -hmm. Detroit public schools. And it's not working. It's not. Because the money's not going to the kids. Well, it's going we, somewhere else, We right? lost a lot of students. We, we lost a lot of tax base. Yeah. And let's face it, yeah. the economy has crunched the numbers for sure in yeah. proportion to what needs to be mm -hmm. paid. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's, it's so out of whack right now, the proportional numbers. I don't know if we ever can rebounce from this because there's so much debt liability out yeah. there. Yeah. And you can't go bankrupt. So everybody out there that says, just go bankrupt. You can't because you can't discharge pension, health care, liability. You could only discharge debts that are not as a result of non-dischargeable. Those are non-dischargeable claims for pension and health benefits. It's like a student loan. You own it forever until you pay it off, right? You got it. Oh, my goodness. Well, I think this is another one to stay tuned to find out how this is all going to go. April's around the corner, Gary. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. I know I'm a I'm a refugee from the Detroit school system, and I got a darn good education from the Detroit school system. And I really would like to see this thing mature and, and stay viable. But uh, you know, we got to look out for the kids. Right, one hundred percent. The kids oh. are the first and foremost yeah, priority. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we're going to wrap this one up. I'm Gary Kopp. I'm here with Pete Lucido, your Lansing legislator. This is number sixteen. <sighs> stay tuned. We'll be back again, hopefully, with number seventeen. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.